Let's now focus on uh, TVS supply chain and let's try and understand where their business is headed and they're eyeing about $100 million in profits in the next five years. So let's uh, try and understand that glide path. Ravi Vishwanathan, the MD at TVS supply chain on the show with us. Ravi, hi, morning. Good to have you on the show. You are aiming to achieve about $100 million in profits by the next five years. Tell us what are the plans and what's the roadmap looking like that's going to help you aid uh, and achieve this number? Hi, good morning. Uh, I think um, it's, it's a pleasure to be at the ET now. Um, we have an ambitious plan to be a $100 million uh, company, profit company uh, in, in the next uh, four to five years, really. Um, and our focus really has been on uh, uh, looking at large-scale outsourcing and focusing on what we call as global accounts. Uh, we are um, very happy currently with our uh, pipeline, which we uh, declared at the end of Q1. We have probably the richest pipeline that we have had uh, in the history of the company, almost 4,000 crores of what we call qualified pipeline. The top 10 accounts that uh, we have started mining aggressively, we have over 65 opportunities just in the top 10 accounts. And that's really our focus. Our focus is to say, how do we increase our presence in the Fortune 500 uh, companies. You know that we were we had about uh, 52 Fortune 500 companies that we worked with about three years ago. That number is 12 to 78. And um, uh, uh, from an opportunity landscape, the large deals have started flowing in. We, we signed a couple of large deals last year. We have declared that. And that has uh, increased uh, the momentum in the large deal pipeline. So if you look at the US and UK, our large scale outsourcing, when I say large scale uh, deals, which are in excess of maybe 2000 crores of uh, opportunity uh, in the pipe has increased threefold in the UK and uh, twofold in the US. So very healthy pipeline, very strong uh, traction with our global customers and the ability for us now to cross sell our capability to these large customers, uh, both from a cross selling perspective and also expanding in the geographies uh, that we are present with these customers is presenting us with a lot of opportunity. I would say that would be the fulcrum on which the entire growth and therefore the profit uh, aspiration of the company uh, is, is on. Right. You're also focusing on reducing logistics costs to single digit, right, in the coming years. How uh, big does this opportunity really uh, present for the company and what are the company's plans to then drive the domestic business uh, growth? I think that's a very uh, key point. Uh, when you look at it globally, uh, the, um, the uh, uh, logistics cost is uh, in, in high single digit, whereas ours is in the early teens. There's an opportunity for us to bring that down by maybe 250 to 400 basis points over the next four to five years. Uh, two things, one is uh, the recent budget gives lays a lot of emphasis on manufacturing. That uh, presents a large opportunity. We need to continuously keep uh, advocating the benefits of outsourcing, what we are seeing in, in the Western economies. How do we bring those best practices to bear with uh, our customers uh, in India? Uh, and those are things that we are doing consistently with our customers. We, uh, we have a long way to go. It's a journey. And I think as uh, companies in India uh, uh, adopt uh, outsourcing, even if, it, uh, if it's at a, at a smaller scale, that will be the real first point which will start exponentiating uh, the growth of uh, uh, the supply chain services and thereby bringing down the cost uh, dramatically in terms of uh, supply chain uh, uh, when you look at it from an overall GDP so, morning, Ravi. What is the outlook when it comes to the overall trade environment in terms of how demand is shaping up? What are trends looking like across geographies? Uh, like I said, our pipeline is, is very healthy. Uh, the end of Q1 uh, is probably the uh, best we have had in the history of the company. Significant large opportunities in the pipeline. And with uh, customers uh, who are in the, in the Fortune 500 set, which basically means that it gives us tremendous uh, opportunity to convert many of these and build the revenue and therefore the profit momentum. Uh, if I look at it geographically, I would say um, UK has been... Uh, a standout for us, and so is the U.S. and U.K. I'm calling out because if you if you look at uh, from an economy perspective, U.K. is not exactly what it is um, uh, four or five years ago. But our business has actually been growing in the U.K. and that comes from the fact that we work in sectors like utilities, like defense, 
uh, like rail, which I would call our, our uh, infrastructure slash sunshine sunshine uh, industry. So we we continue to benefit with our diversity of our portfolio in the UK, and that that is giving us momentum. Um, India uh, Q1, you know, it's, it's well documented. Uh, we, we, you know, it was not uh, great as a Q1, uh, but we are hoping for a much better festival season uh, going into the next quarter. So, you know, just to amplify a little bit more about that and the kind of opportunities, because you have also spoken about that in the past, has anything been materialized in terms of what we can expect in the coming quarters, what you've closed in on in terms of the, the talks that are currently underway, if you could give a little more clarity on that? Uh, so, I, I have to um, uh, reiterate what I said. The integrated supply chain deals typically have a 12 to 18 month period before they get converted. These are large scale outsourcing deals. I would think that uh, maybe one or two are on the verge of conversion. So maybe uh, in Q3, Q4, you will see uh, us uh, hopefully winning those opportunities. But we're still, uh, you know, uh, awaiting results for those. And they are typically Q3, Q4 uh, announcements for us. So I would say by the end of the year, we hope to at least win uh, one, if not two, uh, significantly large engagements. Uh, that's the that's the uh, outlook from from. Uh, uh, from an FY25 perspective. Okay, and to give us a sense as well in terms of the integrated supply chain solution segment in the country, um, the performance in Q1 was a bit muted. What is Q2 looking like? Is, is the ISCS segment uh, on track for double-digit growth for FY25? And what is going to lead this? I think uh, as a company, we'll continue to see double-digit growth in ISCS. Uh, India continues to... Uh, be a bit sluggish. Uh, we don't see a reversal of that trend uh, in Q2 uh, uh, early. What we see, but clearly uh, the festive season is what we're looking forward to, and I, I'm bullish about uh, our our um, outlook for um, Q3 and beyond. Uh, but we are we are on track to deliver a double-digit growth on the ISCS as as well. We're so good having you on the show. Thank you for taking the time out. Thank you so much. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.